Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild Nun Cut Podcast. We're at the SHOT Show at the Ruger booth with the one, the only, Doug Koenig. Oh, well, you pronounced you. it correctly. Most well, people mess it up. I have been coached, okay, by how to say your name <laughs> over the years of I, you on the I, shooting team. I never said anything. I, you have, what are you talking about? You <laughs> yell at me all the time, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> like all the time. My name is not Koenig, okay? <laughs> okay. No, I'm just teasing. No, you've been great. And you're you're such an inspiration to so many people. Like we just got done interviewing one of the youth, um, our new shooting team members. And um, it makes me feel really old. Um, How but do you think I feel? I, <laughs> yeah. Well, but you are still like... How many years have you been competitive shooting? You started what you were 16, I think. Yeah, you said? 16, 17. So since uh, 1986. Yeah. And then full time as a pro since 1990. Yeah. And you're still winning or top five or in that high echelon. Um, and it just and even like I think you said this last year, you're faster now than you were before. But people are getting faster also. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know I'm shooting better than ever, but you know. The group, the younger group moving up, you know, the equipment enhancements and just different uh, training techniques, physical conditioning techniques, yeah. and just, you know, they're just faster, you know. Yeah. When I was, I wish I was 25 all over again getting started with the equipment that we have now and the knowledge of, you know, diet and different things like that. Nobody ever paid any attention to that stuff. Yeah. You pay a lot of attention to it, and I really appreciate that about you. Like, we're out on range day, and we're all over in the corner eating protein bars and yeah. <laughs> talking about our vitamins. And <laughs> I mean, it also makes me feel old, but it's it's also the younger, the younger group of shooters is really also learning that in order for them to be competitive at that level, they also have to be athletes. Well, that's, you know, I kind of take, you know, some pride in, in that aspect that, through my shooting career and not knocking any of my predecessors. But, you know, when the sport was young, uh, it, it was full with, you know, lots of different folks. And that was one thing that I always took serious right out of the gate was physical conditioning, be in shape, running, cardio, all that kind of stuff. I, was, I felt like I was leading edge. I mean, back in the early 90s, I used to bring a chiropractor with me to a lot of matches and just always wow. trying to think of a different way to optimize performance of for myself equipment's one thing but you know you can have the best you know the best gear guns uh, ammunition all that but if you're if you're not peak ready to go and you have to be an athlete and it just shows you know what we do now whether it's USPSA uh, PRS uh, Bianchi any of that kind of stuff and then fo you know following into the hunting stuff if you're not in shape I mean yeah you can you can hunt that's yeah. awesome but you can't do the real physical stuff and there's a lot of lady shooters that i follow online and you see them and they're in sports conditioning they're not just lifting weights they're doing a lot of hand eye conditioning similar to what you would see a football player do i mean right. is that how you're conditioning as well exactly my trainer we do you know bands lights we do all sorts of stuff you know for that exact same stuff you know. Do you have a trainer that you go to like several days a week or how does that Well, work? I don't go to him now because I live in Florida yeah. and he's in Pennsylvania, yeah. but I, you know, he was my guy 
for you know eight or ten years and I found him through my boys trying to get bigger faster stronger for football for their sports and uh, he's a he's a hunter shooter we, we kicked it off and um, you know but he still does all my programs mm -hmm. and hopefully I'm gonna have him down the next two or three weeks to my place and just kind of go through you know the gym that I'm at just to make sure I'm doing everything with the right uh, stuff, but he builds my programs, my diet plan, the whole deal. So you are following like a full-fledged nutritional protocol as well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Pre-workout, uh, you know. And this is, you know, I have uh, in-season training regimen, off-season training regimen, off-season diet, in-season diet. So it's it all this one circle. It all Give goes. Give me hand a high-level view of this. Like, are we talking in-season? You're like cutting calories or carbs or you're no, not cutting more. or you're adding? A actually okay. more carbs uh, because your brain needs that, yeah. you know, for the cognitive stuff in the matches, being able to think on your feet, doing that kind of well, stuff. Well, I can tell you when I've shot a few matches, in, not to your level, obviously, but when I've shot matches, as soon as I start getting hungry, my match performance or my, um, my uh, performance in that particular set really just goes downhill well, yeah like, well your brain it, it, you know in essence the muscle it needs energy for you to focus yeah. concentrate remember what you're going to do and that, you know i learned that many years ago i mean it's interesting when i started to shoot none of the shooters would you know they wouldn't eat breakfast they wouldn't eat lunch they're like no i don't want to have anything in my stomach and so i did that and realized you know the first stage in the morning i'd shoot good and then the next stage not as good and by the afternoon i couldn't hit anything yeah and I thought, well, geez, that's what these guys are doing. You know, maybe there's something wrong with me. And then immediately I learned that I, I need to eat. I need to eat something continuously. Yeah. When, I'm at a, when I'm at a match, it's, it's every hour, hour and a half, I'm eating something, right? Whether it's oatmeal, whether it's a protein bar, jerky, something. Mm -hmm. I, I just have to keep it going all day long, keep that energy up. And I think it's a huge, huge thing. And back to the training, you know, when I'm in season, I'll only train, you know, with weights two days a week. And it's... It's a totally different setup, and off season it's three days a week, and we're more of more in a build process. Mm -hmm. Whereas once the shooting season starts, it's more of a maintenance mm -hmm. situation because you know if I shoot two or three two day matches, you know, uh, in a month, sometimes four, and then depending with whatever training I'm doing, teaching, or practicing, I mean, you can't be in the gym at the same time doing all that and yeah. then going out and shooting, moving a 20 pound rifle around. You just at some point, again, if I was 25, you can get away with more. Mm -hmm. I'm 55. I just got to be smarter in what I do and how I approach things. Extremely disciplined is how, you know, when I was talking to Abby, the, her discipline level and your discipline level is you, you don't compromise on these things. You, This is part of my daily routine. This is what I do three days a week. And you just do it. There's no excuse. You don't make an excuse of, oh, I'm tired or whatever the excuse is. No. And you can't. And for me especially, I don't know about everybody else, but, you know, if you take a day off or you skip a day, you know, my wife says, oh, we'll just, you know, we'll do it tomorrow. It's like, yeah, but when you when you push it a day, yeah. then it's easy to push it another day. That's and right. then before you know, because you'll always find something to fill the time slot, you yeah. know, with, with being busy. And, or uh, people and I, get on their phones, and the next thing you know, oh, my gosh, I've spent... Two hours, 45 on the, yeah. minutes or an hour on this phone. I've got nothing done, but I don't have time for the gym. Right, exactly. Right? Like that's, I well, see that all the time. Well, I love the folks in the gym that sit on the leg press machine and they're on their Instagram and they're not or whatever in, this stuff. They're, they're like, not Come mentally on, engaged Get off that thing. Let's go. Focus workout. or get off, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it is, it, that's what happens. So for me, I have to stay disciplined in my, my weekly plan. You know, when I'm going to the gym, when I'm going to the range. You know, all so that stuff. So what's your wake-up time in the morning? Are you like a 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock No, I'm not guy? a 4 or 5 o'clock. You know, I typically wake up 6.30-ish uh, um, pretty much every day, uh, get up, eat breakfast, and if it's a wait day, go to the gym right away, do that, come back, work on equipment, load ammo, do stuff in the office. Because I also am running matches, uh, national matches in the first part of the year, so I'm doing sponsor connections, yeah. setting things up, organization. And we know you love doing that. emails. Yeah, you just love how I love, <laughs> yeah, I, I love being in the office. I love 
working on emails. And, and more than that, I love social media. Yeah, you, know yeah, me. you I'm just, love social media I'm just also. great at that stuff. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, I, I know how to pull a trigger. I'm pretty good at that and everything around that. But um, so, but yeah. you graduated to a place now where you have the help of a great team that kind of fills in on some of those things. Like, you can't be great at everything. I'm better at social media than you, but you're also a much better shooter than I am. <laughs> like, 10 million fold. Um, so, we, we have our strengths on certain yeah. aspects. But, yeah, you have a busy day. And then, so are you training, when you're training or you're in maybe off season, I guess, are you practicing every day no, or no no actually what i try to do as well is is kind of lay off i laid off kind of december january i'll start back shoot you know shooting work into it in february again it's for as many years as i've done it not that i don't need the practice or uh, i want to practice but it's the repetition that breaks you down yeah so i i need to kind of i have a different workout routine and then i try to give my body that rest because if if i don't you know, by the time September, August, September, October, you know, that, you know, you start creating tendonitis and some other issues mm -hmm. from the repetition, repetition. Mm -hmm. You got to have some sort of break. Mm -hmm. And I also need the mental break. So, yeah. and then I take I that time. I hear you on that. And I take that time to work on my equipment, work on new things that I'm going to be using, you know, for the year. But, but the mental break, you know, uh, be able to hit the reset button a little bit and kind of, kind of get away from it and you know, get ready for the season. It's a long season. And, you know, even though I'm, I'm getting later in my career, I still want to win. And I've and got you still sponsors. are winning. Yeah. And my, and I've, you know, the sponsors still want to see, uh, see the victories. So it takes a lot of energy and effort to be at the top level. Yeah, you know, that last 1% is 100% commitment. So Talk about this mental break that you need. Are you, when you're doing that, you're not training yourself, but are you training other people? Or do you just kind of take like a full disconnect on that? Uh, because I kind of get that way a little bit. With some of the stuff I do myself, I'm like, okay, I just need a day or two, or ideally a week, where I just don't do that anymore. Well, it, it's a mix. It depends on what's going on. I mean, I would prefer to have a week or two weeks of yeah. total disconnect. Yeah. No emails, no just whatever. Yeah. That's hard to do anymore. Christmas. Right. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's hard yeah, to do. So any, whatever I do get, I love to get. Yeah. So I, I, I don't do really any instruction. I try to just stay away from it all. I like to mm -hmm. go shoot my bow, shoot some 3D mm -hmm. archery. So it's not totally away, but it's different. Mm -hmm. and, and just spend family time. That's yeah. really, you know, the time for me to kind of just unplug do things with the family as much as I can get, you know, the older boys, you know, back home or go see them because they're, you know, working now. They're working stiffs like yeah. the rest of us. And, you know, it changes the game when that happens. On your gear, obviously we're at SHOT Show right now, and there is so much new gear. <clears throat> some of it's really good. Some of it's a great idea and it's not great. And some of it is really great. Um, how do you keep up with the technology? the technology change in gear from year to year? Like, where do you find your best resources? Word of mouth, at matches? Because, like, with PRS or NRL, I feel like the gentlemen and women that are shooting those matches are kind of on the cutting mm -hmm. edge of innovation in a lot of regards. Is it the same way with pistols? And is that where you're learning about products and learning about gear that's going to help you improve your performance? Well, it's a little of both. I mean, whether I'm shooting PRS or in the handgun sports, you know, I'm in that in that group, right? And having companies and other smaller companies that are really niche, you know, I've got connections with all them as mm -hmm. well. So there's communication throughout the year yeah. and communication with other top shooters that are also involved with these companies with product and things like that. So I kind of know really in the know I know ahead of time before SHOT Show even what most of this stuff is mm -hmm. you know it's not something new to me when I get here and you know I'm I try to keep things pretty simple you know I mean I'm always looking for an advantage or for you know new technology uh, for for you know companies like Ruger and other companies I work with but on the competition side I pretty much I try to stay simple because mm -hmm. to me my my belief has always been you know, perfect execution always outweighs the, you know, trying to have the perfect plan or, you know, the, the extra stuff of equipment. I call it the tweak of the week. 
you know, an old buddy of mine in racing said, you know, the guys are always chasing the tweak of the week. Yeah. They're always chasing. And for me, it's more about focusing on doing my job, being ready, and just, you know, having, having that perfect execution of my plan and not deviate from it. And there's, you know, again, I'll run that to a point, and then if I'm not getting the results, that's typically then when I step back and go, okay, where's the hole in my plan? Where's the mm -hmm. hole in what I'm doing? Let's fill that. Because mm -hmm. it's easy too, you know, you, you, I don't like to make change just to make change. Yeah. And, you know, my family teases me, and they call me a serial killer, because I mean, I eat the same stuff. You know, I'm very, very predictable. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just a, a, what's a result of me doing everything that way, because I feel like if I- It works. Right, the end product, is a predictable thing. So when I go to a match, I know what I eat, I know the sleep, I know my pattern, I know everything. So if I put all that together with my preparation, then the result should be consistent. Mm -hmm. If you're mixing up any of that in that formula, then you have a change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a positive change, sometimes it's a negative change. So I try to run what's positive and what works until it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I make a change. Talk about the mental aspect of it. Um, when you walk into a match, how much do you believe like success or failure is also mental? It's 100% mental. 100%. I mean, anybody, you know, I've read a lot of books and talked to a lot of shooters and people in other sports, and they, you know, they'll say it's 60% mental, 80%. I think it's 100% mental because the whole system right going into the match itself you got to be mentally ready but that starts way before the match you don't just walk in and go okay i'm ready to go let's let's go i mean it doesn't start then no you've got to you've got to have that plan in place through your training and you got to have the belief that you're ready to go yeah. you know the, the competition the mat you know is only the test it's the final at the end of the year it just shows you how you've studied yeah so once you figure out how you need to study, right, whether that's training, whether that's diet, whether that's your life or whatever's going on, to be able to put you in the spot, you take the test, you see what you end up with, and then you go, okay, I need to study harder here. I need to do more here. And that's really how I've always approached it, and you hope at some point you get to where that fix-it thing mm -hmm. is, a, is a small list, mm -hmm. right? The, the honey-do list is short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really how I try to approach it and, you know, I still, you know, and, and it really changes. And I, and I don't like to, you know, harp on that. But the older you get, just as we, we evolve, right? Yeah. Your body, your, your eyes, just everything is, is never the same. No. So you have to learn how to adjust with that as well, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. my yeah. eyes are not what they were when I was 25 years old. Yeah. Physically, I'm not what I was when yeah. I was 25. But yeah. You know, can I can I do things in my training and my diet to get me, you know, at the top level that I can be yeah. naturally, you know, that's a big thing naturally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's what I'm after. Yeah, I, I would imagine that's in any sport or any discipline that that factors into everything. And um, and, and I do see it myself, like with my age, my eyes are changing, uh, my sight isn't as good, my reflexes aren't as good, like all of these things kind of, they change and evolve, but the, the better you can take care of your body, the better it's going to perform for the long haul. Um, and that's important. I mean, I see you are shooting everything. You're doing, you know, PRS, NRL, you're shooting USPCA. Yeah, USPSA, USPSA Steel USPSA, Challenge. Sorry. NRA action, yep. You're all shooting everything, and you're excelling at all of it. And that that all goes down to this discipline and this routine that you've had basically since you're 16 years old. Yep. Which is incredible. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and it's working. I need to be more like Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, so if somebody is out there and they want to get into shooting, what is some advice that you would give them being, you know, being an up-and-comer or just wanting to start, or a competitor that, Obviously, someone that's already competing, if they're listening to you, you've probably given them some solid nuggets. But let's talk more for those new shooters. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of two different groups. The first thing I would say is not everybody has to, has to get into shooting and or hunting yeah. to be the best, to be yeah. a world champion. That's awesome, but there's a shitload, a ton of fun to yeah. have just to go shoot, yeah. to, whether it's plinking, whether it's at the range, shooting steel targets with your friends, family, 
I mean, that's that's to me is as important or more important. I think a lot of times when people talk to me, they feel like, oh, it's all about competition. Well, no. I mean, there's no. lots of times I just go to the range or just have a good time. Have a good time. That's what it's about, and that's why they should get into it for that. Now, if they do want to compete, you know, then that's a that's a whole nother another level of commitment. But again. Not everybody has to compete and want to compete to be a national or world champion. You can yeah. compete just because you want to compete. Yeah. And that's awesome, too. Be the best that you can be for the resources that you have, mm -hmm. time, money, uh, you know, family and structure and different things like that. Do the best you can. Don't get hung up on not winning or winning your class, all that stuff. That's all. You just have to do what you want to do to make yourself happy. Okay? Yeah. You don't need to worry about... What anybody else thinks or just whatever. Just show up and just compete with yourself and, and improve to whatever or not level improve, you want to. Or not. <laughs> or if not. you just want to have fun. <laughs> you know, I think the thing that drew me, and I've probably said it before, when I started to shoot, it had nothing to do with winning or being a champion or doing yeah. it full time. It was because somebody introduced me to it and started shooting, you know, you know, local matches on a weekend on a Sunday. That's what we did in the Northeast. And all of a sudden, you know, you got a couple guys, and then it's five, six guys. And next thing you know, you're kind of traveling around six or eight guys. You're shooting a match. You go eat afterwards. It's a ton of fun. It's like hunting camp to yeah. me. That's what it was like. Yeah. It was like, I, wow, I couldn't get enough. Plus, I was addicted to, you know, the competitive side of yeah. me then was addicted to the learning. And, oh, my mm -hmm. gosh, there's so much out here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just got totally immersed. And then, you know, it just, it it just kind of happened. And, yeah. But even when it happened... It didn't. Ha I I had no plan for it to happen, mm -hmm. and it wasn't my focus until I got that taste of winning, and then then it was hard to. It was like a drug, you know. Well, it was hard now, to not. Now you live in Florida, where you could shoot year round, and I'm jealous in Wyoming. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. It's oh, it's minus thirty today. I don't think I'll be shooting. Yeah. yeah it's, it's for hard. us, if it's cold, it's you know, in the morning it's forty, and normally in the sixties in the winter time. You know, that's that's cold. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was the big reason I moved there. Wanted to be able to, even if I'm not out shooting every day, if I want to go shoot or anything that I yeah. want to do outdoor, I can go do it. You know, especially working with Ruger, I get to test a lot of guns. So it's nice being somewhere where there's not yeah. two feet of snow and it's not, you know, 10 degrees out. Mm -hmm. So that was Your a Your knowledge deal. of firearms, did you self teach like were you self-taught on that or did i mean obviously you didn't go to gunsmithing school where did you learn so most of it firearms? was you know it was self-taught from working on the equipment but you know you gain that knowledge from gunsmith and gunsmith friends and people in the industry as a competitor you know that's the other big thing is everybody says oh you know shooting competitive is like racing well yeah it is except i don't have a 18 wheeler with a whole bunch of mechanics and gunsmiths yeah. working on my stuff at every match you have to kind of learn to do at least at, I felt at the top level you have to learn how to work on most you know of all your stuff because mm -hmm. there's times where stuff you know you need to change parts stuff breaks I mean you're running them hard uh, and and just tweaking the stuff right before a match I you can't you know if it happens the day before you're not shipping your gun somewhere no. or taking your gun to a gunsmith you got to be able to do that stuff mm -hmm. so you know the 30 plus years of doing that and doing it with a lot of different firearms and really when you start to look at them they're all very very similar on how they work it's mm -hmm. not rocket science yeah. it's pretty straightforward so you know you just use some common sense and take your time and now with the you know these phones and stuff i take pictures of stuff as you take stuff apart that way you know Put how it, back it goes together. back together you know yeah so that's and, one of uh, the things i'm so impressed with when when we're in a, like a ruger meeting or an engineering meeting you know as much about the firearms as, as the team that's building them, if not more in some cases. And that makes you a very valuable brand ambassador, but also an asset to the team because you're the end user. You're the one extracting the most potential out of each one of these firearms. You can give that feedback to a manufacturer, to a company, and say, hey, this is how we can make this better, faster, more efficient, uh, because you're running it. Right. Yeah, I'm the driver, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the person at the range, in the field, shooting it, and, and then I also am getting feedback and see what other competitors are using and, and information like that, and then to be able to share that back to the company 
and, and other companies, you know, I think it is pretty invaluable because, listen, I don't know how to program a, a CNC machine or do any of that stuff. I have no clue. Instagram stories. Exactly. So, you know, I just, I don't know how to do yeah. that. And I'm not going to tell them how to do their job, but yeah. some of them don't get out and shoot very much. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, that's that's where it, it takes a team. It takes a team. That's exactly yeah, right. And uh, I love I love working that way. And it, it's, it's been fun. Yeah. I love getting to spend time with you. I always learn so much just being around you um, as a person. You have such high level of integrity. And I really respect that about you. But what I love about what you do is, number one, your discipline, but your your desire to understand the why. You're not the type of shooter or person that someone's going to hand you something and, and be like, do this. You're going to look at them and be like, well, why? Um, and how and why it, you ask how things work, why you would do something, why is this better, how is this better? And then you actually put it to the, to, to the test to see for yourself. You don't take anybody's word for stuff. And I, and I really appreciate that about you. And it really sets you apart as an ambassador and, and as, a, as a shooter. That's why you are where you are in well, your thank career. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. But that's, that's the thing, I mean, I've had a lot of folks, you know, yeah. do a lot of, and everybody has great ideas yeah. and everybody has, has thoughts and plans, but the bottom line where the rubber meets the road is, is on the range and you get out and shoot it and that's, how does it work? I yeah. mean, it could be the greatest design or the worst design, but how does it actually perform the job and the task mm -hmm. that you're trying to ask it to do. So. Well, I can tell you guys, I am not a great pistol shooter, but I have Doug's custom competition 1911, and I was so proud of myself. We were at front sight, and I was the only one of 20-something people on the line of fire that had a 10-round, one whole group. Like, awesome. Just, awesome. I mean, you could poke a pencil through it. It was beautiful. There was no ragged edges. I mean, it was just like fabulous and I could not have done that without your pistol and that's really great you know you've helped Bruger bring that that custom that competition aspect to our brand to where people can buy your pistol and it's literally competition ready it has your trigger it has everything that you're running it's got a great grip I mean it's just an incredible firearm to shoot yeah, actually to kind of ruins your life I'm not gonna lie because <laughs> spoils you now when time. I shoot other pistols I'm like well these suck uh, not literally I mean but <laughs> that was horrible to say I don't mean that but what I mean is it's just it's like the, it's like driving a Cadillac Absolutely. and it's incredible yeah the other you just have to work so much harder with something else yeah it, it really makes it yeah. easy and you can you know I guess it's the difference of driving a you Ferrari. know, a Ford or a Porsche, right, a yeah. Ferrari, exactly right. I mean, uh, someone who's, you can really feel the difference, yeah. and that's that's really what we're trying to achieve, whether it was with that 1911, <laughs> the custom shop, you know, precision rifle yeah. with, with what we've done there, and, and we've got some things that we're, we're thinking about for the future, mm -hmm. and I think it's all about giving the customers the leading edge, uh, best great equipment price they point. can get at a great price point. I mean, that's the key. It really is, you know. Because it's a it's a big group, and we want to get them out there, get them yeah. shooting, and having a blast, and getting the outdoors. Yeah. Well, Doug, I sure appreciate you stopping in. You guys, Doug also has a custom line of ammunition. If you're wanting to get into um, buying the same type of gear that he's running, so you can find his his pistol at your local dealer. It's a Doug Koenig 1911 Custom Comp. Is that what you call it? Uh, it's just our. Uh, Custom Shop 1911, okay. Ruger Custom Shop 1911. And then he has his own ammo brand. He's using Hornady Bullets, um, and that is available at your Cabela's Bass Pro Shops. That's correct. Yeah, and then uh, I just launched a new website uh, yeah. actually yesterday morning, so that's KoenigShootingSports.com. So you can look on there for classes and, and contact me to you know join a class, set up a class, and then we've got some of my products. Uh, Chamber View, my safety company, we've got that stuff on there. So, you know, it's uh, we've got videos, all mm -hmm. sorts of Instructional information. Videos. Yep, all sorts of information, tips, and some of my shows. And uh, we're just going to keep building on that. And, and he has a show. Um, is, it champion, is it called Championship Doug Koenig's season? Championship Season, yeah. And that's airing on Pursuit Channel. So you guys can tune into Pursuit Channel and watch his show there. It's, it's a combination of both hunting and shooting sports. And we didn't even get into the fact that Doug is also an a very accomplished hunter, but um, that's that's for another day. <laughs> that's 
Maybe awesome. NRA will <laughs> podcast about that. That but, sounds um, good. I really appreciate your time. People can find you online. Um, your handle is just at Doug Kanan, correct? That's correct. So yep. um, fi- Facebook and Instagram. That's correct. So thank you guys all for tuning in for this episode. Hopefully you've got some inspiration from Doug. I know he makes me want to get to the gym more so um, and eat cleaner. <laughs> but I've been doing pretty good the last year. I oh, really, yeah. I, I'm crushing it right now, so I'm not going to complain on that. But your body is so important, and I, and I hope... Whatever discipline you guys are at or wherever you're at in your shooting journey, hopefully you've taken some of Doug's um, words and can help them reflect into your life and make you better at whatever discipline you're we're trying to either just enjoy or be competitive with. Mm-hmm. So thank you guys for tuning in. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Hey, you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to get added benefits like draw odds with top rut that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through hunting full magazine and to boot you guys they've got tons of great specials through partners like silencer central where if you're an on x elite member you really benefit from those partnerships so if you guys aren't a member i encourage you go online to the on x hunt website use code wild 20 at checkout and you're going to save 20 percent you're going to love being an Onyx Hunt Elite member. Hey, you guys, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus, and we are here with our presenting sponsor, Booth, the Ruger Booth at the 2024 SHOT Show. And I'm here with one of our new junior shooters, Abby Jackley. And Abby, we literally have been following your shooting career. We is in Ruger. Um, since you were probably around 16. 16, yeah. And she just turned 18, so guess what? She's now on our shooting team. I'm Welcome. So excited we're excited so, to be with you guys. Yeah, oh and gosh. we're excited to have you. Thank you, guys. Of course. You do a little bit of everything. Like, you've been shooting since you were eight years old, which is awesome. And kudos to your mom and dad <laughs> for having you, like, get involved in shooting sports at such a young age. But you're also a big game hunter. Yes. You, like, literally do everything. So A little bit of everything. Tell us a little bit about what your, like, first memories are for shooting, because what I'm hoping is that we can inspire some parents out there to get their kids participating in shooting sports. Yeah, um, I think some of the earliest things I remember is my dad was the trap coach for one of our high school teams, Mm -hmm. and my brothers, who are 10 and 8 years older than me, shot on the team. Mm -hmm. So I would always go to the practices or go to the competitions, and I remember I even have photos of me at probably eight or nine yeah shooting my first rounds of trap with my dad Mm -hmm. and like me and him hunting small game in our properties or even just like around the house shooting archery when I was super little with my brothers like earliest things of just being with them and seeing what they do Mm -hmm. and doing it myself yeah no that's so exciting so like you're, did you start out, I know you're hunting, you yeah. know, small game, whatever. So were you like plinking with your dad on an old, you know, Ruger 1022 in your backyard? Um, yeah, it was pretty much either going to the trap range and shooting a few rounds or just shooting some 22 at some small things in my yard or going to the range and shooting some little targets that we made up together with 22s and everything. I mean as early as I can remember shooting anything from shotguns to 22 rifles, Mm -hmm. bow and arrows, Mm -hmm. BB guns. And you just always loved shooting. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember a time that I didn't shoot at least a little bit. I mean, I started competitive shooting in probably seventh or eighth grade. Okay, wait, how did you go from like, I'm gonna go shoot some trap with my dad and my mom to I'm gonna be a competitive shooter? Um. It was really weird. I always did sports. I played like lacrosse, soccer, everything. And then one day I was just like, you know what, mom, I want to do, I want to try the shooting team. And she was like, okay, do you want to do trap like your brothers? And I'm like, 
no, I want to do pistols. I'm going to shoot pistols. And none of my family did competition pistol shooting. We've only done competitive shotgun. Mm -hmm. And I came in and I was like, I guess I'm going to do pistols. And I joined the team the next year in like seventh grade. Yeah. And I was hooked on it. I loved it. I tried trap a little bit, but I wasn't as interested in it. I loved pistols and rifles so much more. Yeah. Yeah. And so that spearheaded your going into competition. Yeah. Did you have a coach? Yeah, so our all our high schools and middle schools have teams in Wisconsin. So this is why shooting sports in schools is so important. Um, so my high school had a team, and we had fifth grade to college. So in seventh grade, I joined, and we started with 22 pistols yeah. and 22 rifles. Yeah. And it was like steel challenge, so five steel targets for speed. And so how fast are you? Like, let's let's go down to like, I can draw and shoot in 0.75 seconds. What are you? So for a stage of five steel targets, um, there's a stage they call it either go fast or smoke and hope, depending where you are. Um, that stage with my 22 pistols with my like my Ruger, um, I run about a second, 1.35 seconds average for five targets. Five targets. So what you're saying is there's room for improvement. Yeah. Wink, wink. Ah, uh, hello. That is. We'll try to like, make under a second. That yeah. is literally so fast. I can't even imagine shooting that fast, and you're doing this consistently. Yeah. I mean, it's something I've always. Just and you're drawing loved from the holster. For in, the 22, no. I'm at like they call it low ready. So okay. So you're at low pointing ready. Pointing down towards okay. the ground. Okay. So you're at low ready, and you're still smoking five targets in a 1.3 seconds. Yeah. Well, I don't even think I can reset my trigger that fast. I'm not sure. I'm like, oh, there it is. Uh, there it is. <laughs> so how do you practice for something like that? Um, so currently my dad is the head coach of our high school and college team. So me and him work together and we'll do anything from practicing full stages, so things we'd run in competition, to running just two steel targets up and just off of our low ready up and practice hitting that target as fast as we can and then moving and not stopping on a target but seeing it and continue shooting mm -hmm. on the move so our gun is never stopping. And that's how we can reach those faster times since our gun isn't stationary at any point in the our string that we're shooting. So. so you're almost shooting like by the time your brain realizes you should press the trigger you're already on the next target almost. Pretty much, yeah. It's happening that fast. Mm -hmm. So your sight picture, are you practicing like dry firing for sight picture at home or how does that work? Yeah, so especially us being in Wisconsin, it's so cold um, in the winter and everything. So it's a lot of dry fire, a lot of maybe just focusing on something on the wall, a piece of paper, drawing up to that and knowing like an accurate shot before the shot even goes off. Mm -hmm. Knowing when we look through the sights that that shot is going to be hitting mm -hmm. before we even fire the round and we could be moving on to that next target before that even that round even hits. Yeah. So you know, you're and you have this you trained muscle memory on rec recall. Your recall is probably yeah. extremely good. Yeah. That's incredible. So you have quite the grip also. I noticed like when I shook your hand, I was like, "Wow. Um, <laughs> she definitely has great grip strength and I'm weak." Uh, compared to you. So, yeah, that was really impressive and Thank is you. that one of the things that you work on? Yeah. So a lot of like grip and wrist strength, especially yeah. with managing recoil. I yeah. mean, I've been shooting forever and I do shoot a lot of nine mil as well. So I've had a good amount of recoil management, but a lot of it is like wrist and hand strength as well as for um, different competitions like USPSA, footwork. So I'm in the gym probably four to five days a week focusing on footwork and speed as well as like upper body and back strength for managing recoil and movement. So your strength training extensively as well. Yeah. Strength training should, I think, personally be just as important as shooting training. Because mm -hmm. they really go hand in hand and work together. Is your dad in the gym with you also doing strength training? Um, no, not right now. No, but... dad, what's going on with that? <laughs> well, that's okay. That's it's okay. okay. You're the shooter. But your mom was talking about um, doing a little bit of shooting with you as well. So it's kind of like a full family. Full family thing, definitely. She'll come and shoot the steel challenge or things like that. And definitely range mom. 
Oh, but. I love that. Everybody needs a range mom. Mm -hmm. I want your mom to be my range mom also. Because <laughs> they always have snacks. They do. So let's talk about that. So you're competing. You're training with your dad. He's your coach. You're in the gym. Like, this is a full lifestyle for you. Are there other girls that you know or young women that you know that are also doing the same sort of comp competitive shooting with you? Yeah, definitely. I know a lot of people that if they're not just as focused on speed pistol shooting, maybe they're super focused on trap or other disciplines. I know a lot of people um, that are just as into it as I am and definitely a lot of people that take it not just shooting sports but into their career and their mm -hmm. life choices. So. so if there's a young woman out there or a young girl out there that wants to take up more competitive shooting or get more serious about shooting, what do you think like that first best step for them to take is? Yeah, I think... Because the gear is really overwhelming. Like yes. there's a lot going on. A great thing for me, which I mean, obviously it depends on your area, but for me the SASP or SCTP programs, which are the Scholastic Clay Target and the Scholastic Action Shooting Program, that's where I got started and those are all through your local high schools or maybe a local church club. And so many of those have teams that are a great way for you to start and even if you can't start in fifth grade like a lot of kids that I know did, you can start in high school in your freshman year. And if those aren't options, the 4-H clubs around, even in our area, are super important. They work a lot with even like the Olympic style yeah. shooting with air rifle and air pistol. So yeah. there's many options. And I think those youth groups, like those programs are a great way to get started because they really help you out and can provide your first set of gear for you for your first year if you aren't comfortable in buying all that stuff yet. So I mean, that's a great way to get started. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And what about like loner gear? Do people like pass their gear down like, oh, I've grown now, I'm, I've outgrown my belt and I'm gonna donate this down to like another young shooter? Yeah, I know like on my team personally, um, I work with a lot of different companies and I obviously have a lot of gear I've used from when I was younger. So yeah. a lot of my guns that maybe I grew out of or upgraded have became team guns for our yeah. team and those kids shoot them or um, I've donated a lot of my other gear, glasses I don't use anymore, um, hearing protection, everything from that. And even at local ranges that aren't kid focused or youth focused, I've seen a lot of guys go, oh, um, I love the way you're doing this. I have gear that you can use and gear that you can try out even. Mm -hmm. And that is so important to have other mentors. When you're shooting at the range, do you find that you have a lot of help or the, the community is very welcoming and open and uh, idea sharing and gear, gear sharing? What, are, what is your experience with that? Yeah, even at a range, like not just a youth range or something youth focused, even just my local USPSA club, they're so so helpful there I mean me and my dad walked into our first USPSA match neither of us ever shooting it and all the guys there never made you feel intimidating or feel yeah. like you didn't know what you were doing they were so helpful they wanted to help you walk through learn how mm -hmm. to do it your first time they were giving you gear tips oh this would be a good product for you to try out try mine everything I've never felt like I wasn't Welcome. Being, I wasn't welcome or yeah. I wasn't important to any of them guys. They were always helpful and I know a lot of women will say like sometimes that ranges can be scary but I've never had that problem and I I think it's really about like reaching out and seeing how those people are because so many of them are helpful and different impactful and can really change the way that you shoot too. Yeah no and that's so important. Um, you also so now you're competitive shooting you shoot for Ruger. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what that journey is looking like right now. What is your what is your competition schedule looking like? What is that? How is that transforming right now? Yeah, so in just a few months, I'll be attending SASP College Nationals. So me and some of the other junior Ruger team members will be there. And um, that will be my last year in College Nationals, but I'm excited for it. And then I will also be attending Rimfire Worlds, mm -hmm. which um, that happened not too long ago, but I'll be going yeah. again this year as well as SASP Nationals, which is the high school division, but yeah. we go as well, help out our teams and shoot ourselves. Um, and then matches for USPSA, like Wisconsin and Illinois sectional. Both of those take place super close to my home range, yeah. so super easy to go to those. Area 5, USPSA sectional, and then as well, um, Doug Koenig's match for Steel. 
Are you gonna do his PRS match? Are you shooting precision no, yet? No, okay. um, his speed. Ah, his match. speed. I'd love still. to try out the long range, but you I never should. have. You should. You, you well, if you can shoot a pistol well, you can shoot a rifle well. <laughs> it's it's much easier. Trust me, I shoot rifles for a reason. Uh, but no, it is it is a lot easier to shoot a rifle than a pistol. But let's also talk about. You're also an avid hunter. Yes, I've been hunting as probably when I started shooting competition, or mm -hmm. when I started shooting with my dad on the range. Yeah. I mean, I always went out with him, even if I just sat and watched him, mm -hmm. I went with. Um, I did anything from deer hunting. I shot my first deer when I was about 12 or 13. Yeah. Um, so me and him went and we sat together and got my deer. It was a small buck, but it was like the best thing to me. Uh, it's the best thing in the world. Um, There's no, well, and then the fact that you shoot and train with your dad all the time. Like, yes. that's a very special bond and that you're also hunting together. And your mom's also an awesome hunter. Yeah. I just saw her giant black bear. Like, kudos to mom. Like, you have her some first great black parents. Bear yeah. Too. Like a monster. But, I mean, this year I'll be able to go bear hunting. I think I should have my tag, so that will be super exciting. Hopefully I can get one. Probably not as big as my mom's bear, but I'll try. That's okay. You're going to get out there. That's all that matters. Exactly. Um, and then I am going to be getting into some bird hunting this yeah. year. I'll be trying out some pheasant, dove, geese. Um, my boyfriend's an avid bird hunter. Nice. His whole family's hunted forever with birds. And when he found out I'd never bird hunted before, he He's was like, like, we're going to do gonna this. That. And now is your... Is your boyfriend shoot as fast as you do? He shoots traps, so completely different. Yeah. But he does all the sporting clays, trap, and everything. So, so both it's a good of mix. you are competitive shooters. Yeah. That's really fun that you can travel around with your family and your boyfriend and, and go to all these matches. And, rep, you know, you're representing it's such an important aspect of shooting sports. You know, that it's hard to get young women involved mm -hmm. and you're you're an, a mentor for them you're i heck i look up to you i'm like oh my gosh i want to be like her i want to shoot like you it's so incredible what you're doing and how dedicated you are and i i just find that so inspirational that you're you're putting so much emphasis on being the best you yeah so it's not just like oh, i want to shoot well but it's like no i need to be strong i need to be fast my mind has to be clear. My body has to be in great condition. You're also feeding it with wild game. Like that's that's really wonderful, everything that you're doing. Yeah, and I really try to focus on definitely inspiring the young woman. Yeah. I mean, my our high school shooting team has over half um, women on it compared to the men on the team. And um, I focus on coaching all the younger girls so I do from fifth to eighth grade girls yeah for coaching as well so they're my favorite to work with they're always so sweet and they really just want to get in there and work I want you to coach me <laughs> will you coach me uh, no it's great because the competitive shooting world is so different than like everyday carry or concealed carry or defense shooting I mean it's, some of it is obviously crossover but there's things that you really focus on or train with in a competitive setting and it's different yeah it's very different, and um, I, I just think so much. Like, there's so much for you guys that you're doing is so incredible, and I don't know. I'm I'm just like captivated by the competitive shooting world. I want to do it so bad, but you really have to dedicate so much time. Like, I'm an aspirational competitor. I'm like, oh, I put this out there. Like, I'd really love to do this. I'd really love to be like you. But at the end of the day, you have to be so dedicated. It is very dedicated. You it's cannot very just like step into it and be like, oh, this is something I'm gonna do. You know, maybe twice a year and actually go in and really have a presence. It has to be something that you commit to, that you practice, that you train. Um, are you using any training systems when you're training? Um, I have tried out a ton of training systems. Currently, I do use Mantis mm -hmm. training systems at the moment. But, I mean, I think some of the best ways to train are without those even. I mean, just drawing from your holster, trying out. Do you do it in the mirror? I do a lot in the mirror. And... A lot, um, I'll either have like my dad, because he's my coach, watch me and um, have him critique some things if he notices I'm doing something a little off or maybe completely switching up something and I'm not even noticing it. So mm -hmm. it's great to have other people kind of look at you as well and see how you're training with that. So, I mean, the mirror is a great way to do it, especially if you're alone. You yeah. can see how your body position's changing and it's a great way to work with that. So let's talk about accessories. What is like new here that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get that? Um, 
Definitely, I'm interested in looking at the Ruger hunting rifles because yes. I currently shoot um, a Creedmoor, so I'm yeah. looking to definitely explore into the Ruger American, the second gen I was looking at earlier. Ah, so the Gen 2 is a nice rifle. I really want to look at that because obviously I do some hunting, so I think I need to move into Ruger hunting stuff yes. as well. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Um, I've checked out tons of stuff though. I mean, there's so many great things here. And yeah. Well, it's SHOT Show. We've got everything, all the got gear everything. here. All the gear is here at SHOT Show. It really is. Anything else you want to tell maybe somebody that's aspirational and getting into shooting um, about your journey that you, you might think might help them or any other resources they should look at? Obviously, they should probably go to the USPSA website. Yeah, of course. Um, I think not just going to your basic range and shooting a little bit here and there but really jumping into it go to your first match even if you just go there just and go watch. watch i mean there's so many people that come and watch and everyone's always going back and talking to them asking what they're doing what they want to start shooting what their setup is at the moment but i think working with someone at the range going to that first match trying it out and seeing how that is is perfect a perfect way to get into it mm -hmm. and even if you go and check it out and you decide maybe a different style of shooting is better go to that match too mm -hmm. keep trying things out and you'll find something that the discipline is that really fits, interesting it fits you. your skill level and your interest yeah level. of course you know because there's different there's so many different i mean some people do three gun there's so many different disciplines yeah uh precision rifle, long range shooting, you know, all of that. So there's so many great avenues. Um, where can people find you online if they want to follow you? Because I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of young women and girls that are watching that would love to follow you and be a part of your journey, your shooting career. Yeah, so Facebook and Instagram. I'm, I follow her. I'm both Abby Jackley Outdoors, all one word. So. She's really cute. She wears cowboy hats also. I do. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen because I follow her already. I went to follow her a minute ago and I was like, oh, I already follow you. So this is great. Works out. Yeah, it is great. And um, we're so proud of you. We're so thankful that you're on our team and that you're representing shooting sports uh, at such an incredible level. And you're really putting everything into it. And that's so inspirational to, to me. I think and to everybody listening. So thank you so much. Anything else you want to give? Any other sound out, shout out, advice? Um, nothing else. But thank you guys for being so welcoming with Team Ruger and everything. I mean, just the little bit that I've been on Team Ruger since August has been amazing. Like everyone's so sweet, so helpful. It's just really an amazing team to be working with. Wonderful. Well, you guys, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild Night Cut Podcast, brought to you from Shot Show at the Ruger booth. Go to my website, PursueTheWild.com, click the discount tab. You guys can find some great discounts on there. And also, just go on my website, check out my video library, and um, follow Abby online. We're thankful that you are joining us here, and we're hoping this podcast inspired you as well. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter ammunition. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Unkept Podcast. I'm with my fellow team Ruger Shooting Ambassador, Laurel Aikenhead, and you're just added to the team because, well, I guess you're 20 now. You're not yeah. like a baby. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking that like you're 18 and we just added you, but no, you're nope. you're owning and dominating the precision rifle space um, on the Ruger Precision Rifle. Yep. And just like out there crushing it. I'm trying. I'm yeah, trying you're my doing best. A great job. How did you get shooting like you're 20 you're super young how did you start shooting and what's your journey in that so I started at a really young age with my dad in a garage shooting the air gun so it laid down really good fundamentals for yeah. me um, I yeah, as long as he's teaching them right which clearly yeah. he did <laughs> yeah so he shot a uh, bullseye for yeah. Ohio State so he yeah. kind of had shooting background as well I moved from shooting in the garage to shooting in my local 4-H club uh, shooting 3p as well so like the Olympic style shooting 
And then I moved on to NRL 22, which is very similar to what I do now, yeah. but just with 22, still building yeah. the fundamentals, mm -hmm. getting used to the positions. And mm -hmm. now I shoot uh, PRS, Precision mm -hmm. Rifle League, and that's uh, center fire rifles and 90 second time limit mm -hmm. and lots of positions. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a super fun sport for those of you who haven't shot PRS, and it is... I think it's, have you shot NRL also? I haven't shot NRL Hunter yet. Yeah, okay. But I do plan to. Yeah, it's fun. So PRS is really fun, you guys, that haven't shot before. You go in a squad, you get to a stage, and they give you a right and a left lateral limit. They show you where your targets are, and then you kind of range estimate them, figure out the wind. Yep. And then they, like, basically ask you to do, like, a somersault and then put your, <laughs> yeah. like, handstand and then shoot your gun. No, like, in all seriousness, though, they put you through a lot of rigors of building a shooting position. Yep. At at known distances, um, yep. in, in some are close to far, some are far to close, some are right to left, left yep. to right. It just depends. They kind of try to trick you sometimes. Yep. And um, It's very mental. It's very mental, and you really have to be on your A game, and yep. you're doing a very great job. So in the PRS, how did you train up for that? How did you feel like just like what made you want to go that route from the 22? So honestly, for me, watching or doing shooting 3P was watching like paint dry. Like it was I could only shoot black circles so many times without... You're bored to death. Yes, I was bored to death. Um, so I just was looking some, for something more like movement, adrenaline rush a yeah. little bit. Um, so one of our friends was shooting NRL 22 and was like, hey, you want to come for a match? Yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. And Dad's like, oh, we're not going to have you shoot yet. I'm like, I'm shooting. Yeah. I'm doing this. And Is he your only instructor you've had as your dad? So I've had another guy named Andy Slade. He does okay. uh, Rifleman's Outfitter, Rifleman's Path. And he's the guy who kind of tuned me in the last probably two years yeah. and has gotten me to that finishing point of being a winner. Yeah. Like the mental, the physical, everything you need to win. So let's talk about the mental part of that. The mental part is huge. Um, a lot of the people don't think so, but if you have a bad mental, if you're in a bad mental state, you're not focused, you're not clear headed, you have personal stuff in your life happening somewhere else, then you're not gonna be in that winning state of mind. And you have to be. If you have a bad stage and you let that get to you, then you're done. Mm -hmm. Like you have, if you have a bad stage, which we all do, mm -hmm. um, you just have to think about what happened, figure it out, whether it was your equipment, your yourself, your environmentals, figure it out, fix it the next stage, and continue on. Mm -hmm. Like, mental is a very big part of it, and you just have to be positive about it. And how do you train for that? <sighs> you know, I have I'm just I'm just pushing you a little <laughs> on it because, no, you're like, good. I get it. I'm like, oh, man, I, I pulled a bad shot on that one, bad wind call, whatever. My position was wobbly, and I broke my shot. And you're mad at yourself, and you walk off that stage, like, do you have like, okay, I'm going to give myself 30 seconds to just be angry and then I'm going to get back and I'm winning? I have been relatively calm my whole life, so I've never really gotten super mad about it. I'm, I'm lucky enough that I was just have always had a pretty good mm -hmm. calm mindset about it. I usually, if something bad happens or something wrong happens and doesn't go well, I come off, I take a deep breath. I look, go back and look through my dope and my all my data, and I'm like, well, what really happens? Mm -hmm. And I go from there, figure it out, and then I guess one of the biggest things is is surrounding yourself with other people that have a good mindset. Yeah. If you're around someone that doesn't have a good mindset, then you're gonna be screwed because mm -hmm. you're just gonna grasp onto that, and not even know. Yeah. 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 And if you have other people that are really struggling on a squad, it it can bring down the squad it as well. It definitely yeah. can, especially yeah. how they show it. Yeah. yeah. And the winners usually shoot with the winners and that attitude is is building right? everyone is helping everyone yeah. in those squats yes yeah yeah so let's talk about your physical training what do you do for that oh so my physical training in the beginning was like nothing i would eat Reese cups and dr pepper oh, probably no. much every no. day <laughs> and then you met doug koenig and he's <laughs> yes. like girl you gotta stop this That's like exactly my body what is happened. the temple <laughs> Yes. Yeah. He showed me like everything he eats, and I'm gonna be completely honest. Some of it is nasty. Like what? Uh, like like what? his oatmeal honey stuff, but he's got like seeds in it. No. I don't even know. I had a bite. I was like, oh. <laughs> oatmeal honey and seeds. Yeah. I'm I don't. Gonna ask I don't Doug know what this. was in it, yeah, but okay. it was different. It was okay. different. Um, for the physical aspect, I do CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Um, I do that five times a week, sometimes six for my muscles. Um. And then I do have like a, a coach for eating and mm -hmm. also coaching mentally. Um, but I do CrossFit mostly for physical. Mm -hmm. And then 
somewhat eating healthy. I try, but I mean, we're, I, we're, I we're love, humans. I love good food. <laughs> yeah, and good is in French fries. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No, that's French just my. Fries? That's me. Sorry, that's not oh, you. Oh <laughs> no, no. I love potatoes. <laughs> potatoes anyway. Like, mm, so good. Yeah. No, that's great. So. You have this like full discipline and that's one thing I'll tell you, like the Ruger shooting team, every shooting team member that I've spoke with has been exercise, diet, yep. mental space, yep. dedication, discipline. Yep. And I've talked to a lot of shooters and not everybody has that same formula. And like Doug says, like earlier today, he's like, man, if there's a recipe that's working, I don't change it. I keep it up. That's exactly and, what I do. And that is a recipe for success. Yes. If this, if something I have is working, I don't mm -hmm. change it until something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this whole physical dedication. You just finished high school two years ago. Yep. So you're fresh out of school. Are you in college? So I went to a uh, year-long course of community college. I'm not a big school person. Yeah, hey, I'm here. I'm with you. It's <laughs> and all I honestly wanted a backup plan in case yeah. shooting didn't work out for me because that was that could happen. Yeah. Uh, so I went to a year-long course of community college for welding because I figured this world is always going to need nurses and welders. And to you need to be able to work on your guns. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Anyway. So I chose welding. I'm not too much of a people person yeah. always, so I didn't think nurse was going to be it for me. So I chose welding, did a year-long course on that, and I had my welding certificates. So if this doesn't end up working out for me, which I doubt it will, I'm trying really hard oh, to make girl, it work. Don't sell yourself <laughs> short. Um, but so I always have that as a backup plan. Yeah. So you're shooting full-time then? Yes. Yep. That is my living for right now. I made it last year. and going to continue on this year. You got this, girl. You, I mean, there's a lot of professional shooters that are in this room that should They're, be, you know, it's inspiration that you know it, it can be done. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people doing it. Um, yeah. And, and you're doing it. Yeah. And that's a huge accomplishment. And yeah. so rumors are out there, <laughs> like, I've shot matches before. I'm not good. I Like, I shot matches to be better at hunting. Yeah, right? Yeah. To be better with my equipment. I'm not... Yes. I'm not um, at this upper echelon level of shooting just because it requires, like you were saying, so much dedication and it so takes much a lot training. Of practice, and yeah. you have to practice so much. And I, my time is so divided. Um, I love shooting matches because it makes me better when I'm a field. Right. And shooting is such a perishable skill. You know, the things that we get really good at, if we don't practice them for a while, you it fall disappears. Off the, you know, you fall off, right? Yeah. Fall off track real quick. Yep. Um, what does your training week look like with that in mind? Oh, it varies from time to time. Like this year, uh, I won't be home very often to train. So matches are, I'm You're just going to constantly, constantly be shooting. Um, my average training week, I train four to five hours a day. I attempt to, um, whether that's dry firing, live firing, doing something with my gun four to five hours a day. That's what Every I do. day. Five days a week. Five days a week, yeah. And then I do CrossFit, and then which is roughly an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And then um, I do meet with a mental coach, and then eating. Eating doesn't really count, but yeah. I try mm -hmm. to do something with my gun, whether it's maybe changing a part out, cleaning it, taking care of it, training. I'm always touching that firearm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're shooting the Ruger's Precision Rifle. Yep. And you're shooting, I would assume, the custom competition version yep. of that. Yep. Have you done any modifications to it? So I shoot in a production class in PRS, which okay. there is a price limit on That's it. That's correct. I take a, I like to take the production gun off the shelf and beat the open shooters with it. Mm -hmm. That's what I take joy in doing mm -hmm. this. Um, so I have very minimal um, changes to it. I have the Leopold Mark V with the mm -hmm. PR2 reticle as my mm -hmm. scope. I have some MDT products on it, like the uh, brake and some weights. But other than that, that's all I've changed. I don't mm -hmm. do much to them at all. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I have some weights on mine, and then the only other thing I did, I think, was um, switch out a trigger okay. on mine. But Yeah, I kept the stock trigger, and I also take the uh, cheek piece off of the rifle because I use a chin weld, not a cheek weld, which is a little different to the other people. But I use a chin weld, so I needed I it chin, to be a little bit higher. I chin weld on my hunting rifle, uh -huh. but not on my competition rifle. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yep, okay. I always chin weld, not cheek weld. So it's really? a little different. Yep. Well, that is, I'll have to try that sometime. Now, what is your reasoning for that? 
So I was getting a lot of shadow in my gun without realizing it in the lower positions. So you can, it means your eye isn't completely- Ocular alignment. Yes. So I, in order to get rid of that, I took away my cheek weld and started to a chin weld and that I know the exact place I'm supposed to be. And if I'm not in that place, then I can't see through it. Mm -hmm. So it's helped a lot with that. Cause I was with using my che cheek weld, um, getting that kind of scope shadow without noticing I was doing it in the time limit of 90 seconds. Well, and scope shadow will throw your impacts around. So yep. then you become less accurate. Yep. It diminishes your accuracy. Exactly. Which is not something that you want in your in your sport <laughs> as well. Yeah. So how many matches do you think you're going to shoot this year? So PRS two days, I think I have about 20 set up. Mm -hmm. um, other than that... So I'm you're like every weekend. Because there's, you know... 52 weeks a year. Yep. So you're every other weekend at a different match. Oh, yeah. Basically. Yep. Yeah, I, I shoot all the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have about 22 days, I believe. I have some one days, and I have some qualifying matches to qualify for Worlds. Um, and then I have some out-of-country matches, like in Norway and um, Canada. And then I have some air gun competitions as well coming up. Wow. You're doing it all. I'm trying. Like, that is so <laughs> impressive. And then who do you travel with? So... Being 21, that's actually really hard. Well, only 20. You can't rent a car and you can't get a hotel room. No. And I have run into that so many times. It sucks. Um, so I usually bring my mom with me or my my dad. Or I travel with Keith and Andy's couple of my shooting buddies. Friends. And we travel around together. But other than that, I usually have to have somebody with me. Yeah. Are you shooting Hornady ammo as well? Not yet. Okay. Hopefully soon. Yes, but if you were shooting ammo, you would be shooting Hornady. Oh ammo. yeah, I yeah, shoot. I shoot uh, 110 A tips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are the aluminum tips. Hornady came out with those. I don't know, three years ago, something like that. Yeah. My um, guns love that. Are you shooting a six millimeter Creed mm -hmm. or what are you shooting? Yep, six Creed. Perfect. That's yeah. that's a great that's a great rifle and a lot of fun to shoot. And um, I really enjoyed shooting mine. Yeah. And it's <laughs> it is it is a fun sport. It's a very addicting sport. It is very addicting. It is very addicting. <laughs> yeah. And so you've been doing competition for how long now? I've been competing in PRS for four years. Okay. Yeah. And that's where you met Melissa yes. as well? Yeah. She's great. Yes. Yeah, I love her. She's amazing <laughs> and um, she's wonderful. Yes, yes, she is. She's a very sweet girl. She's a very sweet lady. Yeah. yeah. So it's good that you get to meet so many wonderful women. That's where I like, that's Ray, the girl that was just here yep. before you podcasting with me. We met in the shooting world and she's become such a great friend. And I it's have, a wonderful community. I have met some of the coolest people doing PRS. Yeah. Some of the coolest, like even the guy who makes the freeze dried strawberries for Starbucks, I've met. Really? Yes. I have met some of the craziest people. It's, I love it. Yeah. I love it. You never know who you're going to meet. So how did Ruger find you? Was it Doug found you? It was Doug found me. Doug found <laughs> it was you. actually kind of a crazy story. Not crazy. I had one of the worst stages I have ever had. I got a zero. I walked off. It was in North Carolina. I walked off the stage and I got a zero. And I was pretty embarrassed of myself because I hadn't done that for a while. And I got off the stage and I thank the ROs for being there. That's what I do every time. Yeah. Good sportsmanship. And, yeah. And he came up and he's like, hey, I really appreciate that. I appreciate that you walked off that stage with a zero and still think the ROs and held yourself together. I'd like to have you on the team. I was like, whoa, I was not expecting that after doing that. Like, to me, terrible. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I held myself together. Yeah. And We're often really so hard on ourselves that um, when we make when we make a mistake in a situation that we don't really look at the good we do as a whole. Yeah. And, yeah. like, as a whole, you're, you're an incredible young woman. You're, you've got high integrity. You have great discipline. Um, you're training extremely hard. You have big goals. Yeah. And um, even when it gets you down, you don't let it get you down. You know, if, yeah. if something bad happens, and that's what it takes to be a winner. Yeah. I you try know? to be. Yeah. yeah. That's everything I try to do. Yeah. I can tell you, you know, I with my shooting, there are people that have helped me so much that have been so nice. Like, I couldn't have been there without them. You yeah. know, they're very helpful and kind and kind of just, here, we're going to help you out, give you some advice, give you an yeah. input. And that's very that's very powerful. It, like, is life-changing. Yeah, and, it is. And um, it makes you be a better shooter. It makes you want to come back also. Yeah. It makes you want to be a better person all in yeah. whole. Yeah. It does. Do you see more women shooting with you now than before? Oh, my gosh. When I first started, there might have been four at a match yeah. and now there's like a 15 mm -hmm. like they're and they are good now yeah. like they are getting competitive fast yeah. 
and yeah. it's especially the junior like junior girls yeah they're stepping up their game they are ready to do this and it's kind of crazy to see because when i started there was not that many it was me and like two other girls that were pretty competitive and now they're stepping it up yeah now you're having to work harder and train that yep. five hours every day yeah yeah without without fail yeah where does everybody find you like if people want to follow your journey and be a part of what you're doing where can people find you i am long range laurel on every platform you can think of so, I've made it pretty simple. That's, hey, I'm, I'm Christy Titus. Yep. That's it. Yep. Long range Laurel. <laughs> that's perfect. Well, I hope everybody follows Laurel on her journey, and I appreciate all of you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We love our sponsors. We love Ruger. We love Onyx Hunt. We love SCI. I invite you all to check out my website, PursueTheWild.com. Get online, watch some videos, yep. and... Um, Thank you for joining us. I appreciate Well, thank you, you. for having me. As my, hey, it's my pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure. I'm inspired by you. It's incredible. So, thank you. Thank you guys again. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.